Welcome back to the channel folks, JD here again with another quick video uh, relating to all things car finance. Um, so apologies, last night I was intending on releasing version 5 of the PCP spreadsheet with the new overpayment function, but literally um, I'd spotted something that wasn't working quite as it should have done. It's taken me some considerable time of tinkering uh, to actually get it working and I think it's working but please do anybody who's already obtained a copy and who will shortly be getting their hands on this latest version do please tell me if it's not behaving as it should behave I have compared it with some um, mortgage overpayment websites and it's it's comparable so I think it's there so I just wanted to uh, run you through it and then anybody who's already subscribed will uh, subscribe to the spreadsheet that is not necessarily to the channel um, will receive a uh, new version so essentially here it is um, after some feedback on the previous video where somebody described the colors as I can't remember quite what they said but garish or something along those lines I, I, yes I agree so I've toned the colors down again I'm not a uh, uh, color designer as it were so um Bear with me if you don't like the colours, but I've I've tried to make it a bit tamer than the, the bright blue and the bright red. Okay, so let me just take you through uh, the added functionality. So I've tried to, first and foremost, I've tidied up the spreadsheet so it won't show any errors anymore. So if there's nothing on the spreadsheet, you won't get any errors that the spreadsheet previously used to produce. So I've got rid of all of that. Essentially what you do is, as before, you enter anything into the grey boxes now. So essentially, let me just get rid of... Uh, these bits so we can start from scratch so what I'll do is I will show you uh, three uses for this new spreadsheet PCP HP excuse the dog barking in the background um, and mortgages because somebody the other day emailed me and said could you use this for mortgage calculations and as I said at the time I don't think there's any reason why you couldn't do so I've now extended this all the way to 35 years now because obviously longer mortgages are fairly common now you know gone are the days when you had a 25 year mortgage it's not uncommon uncommon certainly have a 30 year mortgage or if not more these days so this will now do up to 35 years worth of calculations so let's take a look at a simple HP agreement first so um, let's say I don't know it's ten thousand pounds um, deposit of two thousand pounds so you're borrowing eight thousand pounds now the important bit is here because of the conditional formatting I've now put in the spreadsheet so it doesn't show any errors and things it's important when you're using this as an HP to actually enter zero into this guaranteed future value box rather than just leaving it blank so I'm going to pop a zero into there and then the starting month will say is July 2020 and we'll say the APR is I don't know 4.9 which gives us a uh, an equivalent annual interest rate of 4.79 and we'll say it's a 36 month agreement again the important bit there is as we've talked about many times in the past make sure if you're certainly doing it with PCP that you enter the number of equal payments not the number of months on the agreement in total so for example if it's a 48 month agreement and it's 47 equal payments with month 48 being the balloon payment or the guaranteed future value make sure you enter 47 in there and not 48 so we're going for a 36 month agreement um, the free months I'm not going to dwell on too much that was kind of I did a video on that a few weeks ago go um, as we're coming out of lockdown it seems quite common for for manufacturers to offer kind of what they're calling free months or months on us if you like and that's where you effectively don't have to start making a repayment for say you know rather than one month after you collect the car it might be four months after you collect the car so you're getting kind of three months extra free so i'll leave that blank and as you can see it's telling me as it's always done in the past uh, monthly payment 239.03 gives us a vt point um, of 14 months roughly because this is a straight HP so it's a lot easier to reach the VT point um, and up here look it's telling me what the total charges are so £604.91 and with overpayment £604.91 because we haven't put any overpayment information in yet I've also highlighted when the agreement finishes with yet with a yellow box there look and then obviously where it's where there's a zero required payment because you've paid off the agreement if you like I've highlighted highlighted that in green so with no overpayments on this example it's 239 pounds 
uh, and three pence a month okay um, and what I'll do now is just show you how the overpayment function works so essentially what you do is you can type in um, an overpayment amount anytime you like so let's say you wanted to put a 50 pound overpayment on right through the agreement so all you've got to do with that is just enter 50 and if no if you're not overly familiar with excel if you want to populate everything in a in a in a row or in a column as i should say if you just put 50 pounds once in there and just hold on this little gray square until it turns into a solid black arrow we can then just drag that down so let's say i'm going to put 50 pounds a month on for the whole three years straight away you can see that we've repaid the uh, agreement earlier so our last payment look is less than all the others so in month 30 we've now just got to pay 66.46 okay ignore this extra bit i need to sort that out but i'm just going to do that on a later release so basically the last amount to pay is 66 pounds 46 and it tells me there lot that we've saved 106 pounds 72 in additional interest charges because of that overpayment so the total cost now instead of being 1060491 it's 1049820 so i think that's working okay let's have a look if we were to use this for a pcp so what we'll do We'll change it to say, I don't know, a car of £30,000. Again, £2,000 deposit. Um, guaranteed future value, let's say it's a 36 month agreement. So let's say the guaranteed future value is £14,000. Well, again, we're starting it in July 2020. And we'll say it's, I don't know, a 6.9% APR. And it's a 36 month, but a 35 equal payment agreement so we'll change that to 35 so it tells me now look let's just get rid of the overpayment for a minute so it tells me now that our monthly payment on that's going to be 521.49 and we could effectively vt at about month 29 so that would be january 2023 again all we want to all, all we need to do to enter the overpayment is put any values you like in any month you like so let's say this time i don't know we're going to put a thousand pounds overpayment on month 12 that's brought the repayment back slightly look and i'll tell you what happens there in a second and then say 1500 pounds after two years so now what's what now what i've done look is i've again i've highlighted the month at which you would effectively now reach the guaranteed future value through overpayment so rather than it being fourteen thousand pounds after 35 payments you can see now after what 29 payments in this example equal payments still we've effectively dropped the settlement to 13,900 or thereabouts so you can see in this example by overpaying a thousand pounds in month 12 and 1500 pounds in month 24 we've effectively reached the guaranteed future value what about six months early so after month 29 so that's quite useful if you want to kind of see how an overpayment affects a pcp as well if you carried on um, running it further for the same 35 months, your final value would be 10,700 instead of 14,000. Now, I've never done this on a PCP, so it might be that when you reach the agreed guaranteed future value, so in this case at month 29, you might have to then make a decision on the car. So do you want to give it back, etc. So it might be that what we've done by overpaying is just brought the end of the agreement sooner. So effectively, you got more equity in the car at that point. OK, so that seems to be working quite nicely. And the last example, oh, in this case, you see, uh, we would have saved £655 in interest charges which I think sounds high, but it, it looks right. Do tell me if you spot any errors on here, as I say. Um, let's do one more example. Let's say we wanted to use this as a mortgage calculator. So obviously no guaranteed future value on a mortgage. So enter zero there. And then let's say it's a £200,000 mortgage. Uh, no deposit, obviously. So we're borrowing £200,000. We're starting this month and it's, I don't know, 1.75. Mortgage rates are very competitive at the moment. And let's say it's for 25 years, so that's 300 months. So there you go, it tells me my standard repayment is £822 a month. Total charge is 46000 on a £200,000 loan. And you can see all the way down 
to the very end we've now paid it off there okay if we then overpay so let's say I don't know let's say we come into some money so month 36 we put a 50,000 pound overpayment on the mortgage obviously a lot of mortgages will only let you overpay up to 10% a year but let's assume that we can put a massive wedge on you can see there look we've saved 17,000 pounds in interest and the total cost is now 229 instead of 246 the monthly payments the same but you can see that we've now by putting that on reach the end of the mortgage with one last payment of 389.43 instead of the standard 822.25 and we'll have paid the mortgage technically by month 219 so whatever that is uh, what's that 81 months early so what's that we've probably saved what's that uh, seven years or so off the mortgage term and we would have paid it off by September 2038 um, instead of July 2045. Actually, I've just realised, I'll, I'll sort this before I send this out. This only goes to 25 years, not 35 years. So I thought I'd change that, so I'll add on some more rows. So I hope that is useful. So we're getting there. We're getting this to be more and more comprehensive. Um, it's now calculating overpayments, monthly overpayments or random overpayments whenever you wish throughout the agreement. It tells us how much interest we've saved. It tells us effectively through the highlighted cell when you would have effectively either paid the capital down in full or you, when you would have effectively brought that guaranteed future value further forward on a PCP agreement. Uh, okay I think that's it one thing that I haven't talked about for a long time and I may as well touch on it now somebody commented on the Facebook group earlier that they were in a local dealers um, and they said and the guy said um, if you take out our finance we'll give you a two-year warranty um, and it was 10.9 percent APR and that happened to me a couple of years ago and that's what led me to including this incentive calculator on the spreadsheet and what the incentive calculator does is you enter how much the incentive would cost if you were to buy it you enter how many months the salesperson has told you you need to run that finance agreement for to keep the incentive although I'm not overly sure whether that's that can kind of be um, what's the word uh, oh I've, I've gone blank I'm not sure whether that can be enforced on you but let's say you were buying a new car at thirty thousand pounds two thousand pound deposit let's say it's on a PCP so twelve thousand pound guaranteed future value and it's ten point nine percent and it's forty seven months so a forty eight month agreement five hundred twenty one pound seventy six a month and if they said to you right well you can have this warranty that would normally cost you I don't know twelve hundred ninety nine pounds for a, for a two year warranty if you enter twelve hundred ninety nine in there lot and we say, well, how many months have they told us that we need to keep this finance agreement running to keep the incentives? So let's say they say, well, if you run this in uh, agreement for six months, you can keep the incentives. So if I enter six there, lot, it basically tells me that we'll have paid in six months three thousand one hundred and thirty pounds and fifty six pence. OK, the settlement at that time isn't working. So I need to repair that before I send this out. But essentially what that should do is pull out the settlement figure and tell us effectively how much that incentive has really cost us if we were to then pay off the, the agreement and refinance. I'll sort that out before I uh, reissue this. But essentially, as you can see, uh, it's quite a big update. I'm quite pleased with it. If there are any questions, um, if it's not working as it should, you know, I've tried to you know put a lot of different scenarios in it but please don't hesitate to let me know anybody who's already got the spreadsheet from me if you do want to uh, obtain a new version um, and you've not uh, obtained one before from me just send me an email here you'll get my auto response which will tell you how you can um, obtain the spreadsheet um, and you'll get one very very soon after you follow that 
email instruction okay so i hope that was useful i will be issuing this out shortly this evening um, as soon as i've repaired this incentive section so uh, do stay safe um, thank you for watching please do continue to comment and subscribe email me here with any other questions i'm still thinking about how we can develop the service to you know give more help and give more um, tips and I don't like to say advice because it's not advice as you know but more more help for people who are perhaps novice um, car buyers and they you know they haven't got a lot of confidence in the dealership I am still thinking about how I can offer that service to you so uh, I'll see you next time and thank you very much for watching take care